All right, this is fourth grade module five, lesson 12. And in this lesson, we're going to be using benchmarks to compare two fractions. Now, ultimately down the road, students are gonna be using some sort of standard algorithm, a more um, like algorithmic way to compare uh, fractions. But at this point with the lesson, we're just using benchmarks. It's the idea of helping kids develop an understanding of the fractions that are going on rather than just having them follow a blind, blindly follow a, a rule. And so what we're going to do is the classic. Now this is, should be familiar with parents and teachers from the old days, the old school way of learning math. Um, we're going to be using zero, a half, and one as our benchmarks at this point which means if we grab a fraction, we should be able to compare that with one of those three benchmarks. For example, 3 sixths, boom. We know that 3 sixths is a half, so we can put it right there on the half. We look at 9 tenths, hmm, 9 tenths. Man, that's almost one whole. It's almost 10 tenths. So we can kind of put it somewhere right here around one. One fifth, man, that's barely anything. If we know that five pieces is one and uh, is one whole, and we have one out of five pieces, that kind of puts it way down here towards the zero side. And then five eighths, where does five eighths go? Well, we know that four eighths is half, so that means five eighths is just barely more than half. And so that's the kind of thinking that we're going to be trying to get our students to do uh, in this lesson. So let's get started. So using that line of thinking from the previous slide, we're going to plot these following points, and we're not going to do any measurement. And they've given us so far 0, a half, and 1 as our benchmarks. And we can see, hmm, 4 tenths. I'm going to start with 4 tenths because I think that's the most compelling one. 4 tenths, that's a little less than half because we know that 5 tenths is half. And so 4 tenths, it doesn't exactly matter where we put it at this point in the lesson. I'm just estimating. Um, parents and teachers, we, we don't need to be super scientific. Um, as long as they are on the correct side of a half at this point, we're good with that. In the same way, two-thirds, two-thirds, well, a half of three is 1.5, because I think of it like, let's think of here's three, so half of three is right here, and that's one unit plus a half a unit, because over here on this side is a half a unit and one unit, so um, half of three is one and a half, and so... Uh, two-thirds is just barely bigger than one-half. So let's put two-thirds right here. So we've taken care of two-thirds, we've taken care of four-tenths, and now we have just one-sixth remaining. And, and since this whole thing is cut in six pieces and we only want one piece, that means we're going to be down here close to um, zero, somewhere down here. And that's close enough. And that's the level of um, approximation that we're aiming for, is, is the fraction supposed to be near zero? Is it supposed to be on the left of half or on the right of half? Or is it supposed to be close to one? And now once we've got these lined up on the number line in our approximations, we now can compare them because fractions towards the right are larger than fractions on the left. So anytime you grab two fractions, for example here, two-thirds and a half, two-thirds and a half, whatever is on the right is going to be larger than what's on the left. And so our symbol is going to be the greater than symbol. And then here, four-tenths and one-sixth. Well, here's four-tenths, here's one-sixth. Since four-tenths is on the right of one-sixth, we know four-tenths is larger than one-sixth, and so again, we're going to use the greater than symbol. So moving on, we just have more of the same kinds of fractions, only this time it's getting a little bit more tricky. Now, you know, to be honest, three-quarters is something that we want kids to know in fourth grade. We just want them to know that three-quarters is exactly halfway between a half and, and one whole. So to me, there's not much of an estimation there. 
I want them to know exactly where three quarters is. It's right in between a half and a whole. And so let's see, five twelfths, where would five twelfths go? Well, we know that six twelfths is a half. So that means five twelfths is going to be a little bit less than half. Where? I don't know. It doesn't really matter in this lesson. So a little less than half, that's good enough. So we're done with that one. Now we have two sixths. And so the question is, well, two sixths is definitely less than half because three sixths is equal to half. So the question is, hmm, is it less than five twelfths? Because that's also less than half. And so the idea is this is one sixth less than a half, and this is one twelfth less than a half. And since sixths are bigger than twelfths, that means this guy is further away from a half than five twelfths is. So I'm just going to kind of estimate and put it right there, and that's good enough for this lesson. And now we can grab, it says select two fractions and compare. And we can choose any two fractions that we want, three-fourths and five-twelfths. And let's do that. So I can say three-fourths and five-twelfths. What's my comparison? Well, we know that three-twelfths is greater than, I mean three-fourths is greater than 5 twelfths. Why? Because 3 fourths is on the right of 5 twelfths. Fractions on the right are larger than fractions on the left. Now if we wanted to, we could have switched it 5 twelfths and 3 fourths and now our symbol would look like this because 3 fourths is still larger than 5 twelfths so that alligator is going to eat the larger number and the last slide for this video is just using that same kind of logic right here. We're going to compare our fractions. And so here, half is larger than a fourth because a half is a half and a fourth is definitely less than a half. There you go. Um, here, it's going to look like this. Oops, no, 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 no. Yikes. It's going to look like this. How do we know? Well, that's because four-eighths is a half, so six-eighths is larger than a half. Now, you know, tricky ones are like this guy right here. Is how do we decide um, which one's bigger? Because they're both larger than a half. And so you might say, well, four-sixths is just barely larger than a half, whereas this one might be closer to a whole. So you might, students might say this. But parents and teachers at this point when it's really close like that, um, just let your students explain things as long as their arguments are reasonably close and are accurate with regards to zero, a half, and, a, and one, we're okay. Uh, here's another example of that where um, both of these fractions are larger than a half. So now you have to decide, well, which one's closer to a whole? Um, this one, students might say, in both cases, you have three pieces, but quarters are larger than fifths. So three quarters is going to be larger than three fifths. But at this point, fourth graders are not required to know that kind of um, reasoning yet. Eventually, they will get there, and ultimately, students are going to be using some sort of standard algorithm. So that's this, less, this um, slide. I'm not going to do any more problems on this one. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 12, where students are basing everything against the benchmarks of zero, uh, one, and a half to figure out how to compare fractions.